guys, it's Emily, and today I'm here to bring you another Reason Reads video. So first of all, uh, two things have happened since I last uh, spoke to you a few weeks ago. First of all, I went on vacation, and then when I was on vacation, I caught COVID. So now, um, now that I'm back from my vacation, I'm stuck in my apartment for two weeks while I get over it. Although, I've been very lucky. My case has been very mild so far. I've had a little bit of a sore throat. You can probably hear it. Uh, a couple of the days I had a little bit of a headache and also both of my ears are like plucked up so if I'm talking louder than normal that's why. Also I've been having some bathroom issues. But anyway, overall, I've been pretty lucky so far. Uh, my parents both got it as well. Uh, we don't know exactly where we got it, but we went to a family party on Labor Day, and we all got it, and then two other people that were at the party got it, so somebody at the party had it when they were at the party, so uh, we don't know who. But anyway, I, I'm just hanging out in my apartment. I am working from home as I'm able. Uh, this week I've been trying to do at least four hours a day, which seems pretty manageable. Sometimes I have to lay down and take a nap at the ap in the afternoon. But I'm hoping if I progress, you know, at the same rate, the next week I'll just go back to working from home the full day like a normal work from home day. But we'll see. But anyway, you don't care about my health stuff. You want to hear about my book. So let's just get right into it. The first book that I finished recently was actually the last book that I finished in August, and that was Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert. And this, you probably heard of it, it's a French classic about a woman named Emma Bovary who uh, marries a country doctor and ends up becoming wildly unhappy, particularly after she and her husband are invited to a dance at the local aristocratic house, and she starts to envy their aristocratic lifestyle. She goes on to have two different affairs over the course of the novel to, to try to assuage her, happy, her unhappiness, and it's just about, you know, how her life progresses and how she struggles and she is having, you know, she's just very, very unhappy. And she has very little agency comparatively. And it's just about how she struggles through her life. And because she wants to be an aristocrat instead of a country doctor's wife. So this was okay. I didn't really like it. I found Emma to be kind of whiny. The narrator that I listened to made her seem sort of strident. And also, yeah, she's a woman in 1800s France, so she doesn't have a lot of agency. But she's a pretty wealthy, well, she's a pretty well-off woman, comparatively speaking. Like here, she's laying around talking about how miserable she is, and she's got a maid to do the chores, and she's got a nanny to take care of her kid. So she's doing pretty well, comparatively speaking. And then like, her husband's so lenient with her that he'll let her go to a neighboring town for a full day every week to take piano lessons. But of course, she's not really taking piano lessons. She's meeting her lover. But it's just like, she never seems to be very grateful for what she did have. She's just focused on what she didn't have all the time. And I don't really think that's very interesting or necessary. So this was fair, but I wasn't, I wasn't that excited to buy it. I then uh, partially listened to and then finished in my physical book, The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. And this is my second Ruth Ware of the year. I read The Lion Game in March for March Mystery Madness. I liked this one a lot better than The Lion Game, but I still, I don't think Ruth Ware is for me. I, her books always just seem kind of implausible and like over the top crazy and weird and I don't know. They're okay. So this book is about a travel reporter named Lo and she's sent on a cruise ship that's just opened a luxury cruise ship and they are floating around the fjords up by um, Norway and Sweden and all of that to see the Aurora Borealis. And while she's in there the first night she needs to borrow some mascara. So she goes over to the room next door, cabin 10, and asks 
the lady that's in there for to borrow a mascara. The lady lets her have a mascara, but she's kind of like weird and shady, and Lo doesn't know what's going on. But then later that night, she hears something fall overboard, and she thinks she sees a woman in the ocean. But when she calls the purser to investigate, the purser goes, and she also sees some blood on the glass of the cabin's um, balcony. But when she goes in to see the, to get the purser and the purser comes, the cabin tent is completely empty. There's no uh, luggage, there's no sign that a lady has ever lived there, and there's no blood on the glass, even though there just was like five minutes before. So of course the person thinks she's making it up, that she's had too much to drink because she uh, that she does show us that she drinks a lot, and also before she came on the trip, she was uh, burger burger light burger <laughs> burger rised at her apartment, and the uh, person finds out about that and thinks that she's just having you know, some PTSD. And so Lo is trying to figure out who this woman was, where she went, and why nobody seems to know on the ship what happened to her. So. And then it seems just to go from there. So this is a pretty typical kind of thriller setup. This was fine, nothing amazing. I started it on audio, and then I just decided it would be a lot quicker to finish it while I was on my vacation uh, in physical form. The last book I finished recently, and my favorite of the three, was The Vanishing Half by Brett Bennett. This is a historical fiction novel that starts in 1968 with two uh, girls, Shayla and Desiree, who disappear from their hometown and run away to New Orleans. And they are two light-skinned black women. And the town that they live in is called Mallard. And Mallard is made up of all light-skinned black people. And they have looked down on darker-skinned black people. And Shayla and Desiree move to New Orleans. And one morning, uh, Shayla, or I mean Desiree, wakes up and finds that Shayla has disappeared. And Desiree never knows what happens to her. And so we start to see their two lives and what happened after Shayla uh, disappeared. Uh, Desiree ends up moving back to um, Ballard and we see her life with her infant, with her young daughter, Jude. And Jude is a very dark skinned uh, black woman because uh, Desiree's husband was a very dark black man. And so we see their life play out in Ballard, and then we see Jude's life play out when she moves to Los Angeles for college. And then we go back to 1968 and see what happened to Shayla's life. Shayla uh, went to, be, became a white woman. She starts to pass and live full time as a white woman because she's so uh, fair skinned, and she ends up marrying a white man and moves to Los Angeles. And her daughter, Kennedy, ends up meeting Jude later on in the novel. And we see how Jude and Kennedy's relationship affects Shayla and Desiree. We see uh, their lives, all four of the women, their lives play out. And we see how these family relationships affect them. We also spend particular time with Jude's um, life. And we meet Jude's boyfriend and we see the struggles that he's going through as a trans man and we also um we just see some really interesting stuff going on the book goes from 1968 into the um 1980s and we get to see um shayla be friends a black woman the first black woman to live in her all white well okay the first known black woman to live in her all white um suburb of Los Angeles, and we see those two women's friendship, and it's just a really interesting book. It's all about, like, you know, defining who you are, you know, your what impact your history has on you, whether your history can change who you are, your uh, the importance of family, you know, building your own family. It's just all kinds of really cool, um, you know, interesting topics. I really recommend this book. I read this for book club for the month of September, and unfortunately, we met on Zoom, and there's only three of us, and I actually was in the car because we were coming home from our vacation, and it, so it wasn't as a fruitful conversation as I was hoping for, but I really, really enjoyed this book, and I definitely recommend it. I'm sure you've seen it around here on BookTube. Um, I know I had to buy this copy because my library's copy had so many holes on it. There was no way I was going to get it for book club, but yeah, this is just a really fabulous book that I definitely recommend if you're interested.
So that's all I've been reading lately. Uh, I hope everybody else is feeling pretty good and you're reading some great books. And God willing, I'll be back to talk to you again about some more books soon. Bye!